Hi there guys and welcome to episode 4 of Fearless Fox's Football Manager 2021 right here on FM303 with me, the one and only Tom Smith and it is transfer deadline day. That is why the hair is up, the action is focused and we might make one or two last minute maybe desperate sort of measures to try and bring in a couple more players so are we going to take part in the media coverage why not we're going to go for it today i normally wouldn't bother but with that being said let's have a look at what we're trying to do here we are trying to bring in one guy we'll see if we'll get him diade sasamaku <laughs> Samescu, Samescu, I think we'll go with on that one. This is the guy we're trying to sign, right? I think he's going to cost, if we could put off some in the region of 12.5 million, decent contract. And we're still trying to move Napoli's Mendy on as well, as a bit of a balance effect here to try and just readjust that midfield. As you can see from what we're going with, I think he'll be a fantastic sign for us. Great tackling, great passing. Just what we need in that defensive mid role, perhaps even playing more as a ball winning or box to box midfielder in the middle. So hopefully. Hopefully this can add a bit more strength to our team. We've now got an international break for 12 days. So it really is going to be, let's get this deadline day out of the way. Let's just finalise this team. Let's pick our squad for Europe. And then let's hope we don't face any punishments in our games against Palace and Leeds today. But anyway now, let's carry on. Right, so the first action of transfer deadline day has come from the press. Speculation persists that Napoli's Mendy could be leaving. Um, let's respond to them. Um... If they're sufficient, then perhaps be some movement. Um, I'm going to say there's interest. We might well see him leave because I want to try and encourage him to go. I mean, that red card he got against Chelsea, which you didn't see, um, was pretty horrendous. <laughs> Two-footed, really rough. And I just felt like, you know what, it's time to let him go. But anyway, let's see what else we can do here. Mendy set for departure now in the press. We have tried to offer Christian Fuchs out on loan, um, only as a temporary deal, but no one's interested, so we'll decline that for the minute. Mendy is going to join Leeds, so there we go. That's 10 million in the bank, and that allows us there to add a bit more money into the bank account, which is going to be now around about 40 million. Um, hopefully, we'll get Samasku over the line very shortly and then i wonder looking at our registration if i quickly come out of this to registration um obviously mendy can come out now because he's not going to feature it only gives us that one more place which is going to be taken by the new signing i wonder if we should have one more tweak that's why i looked at christian fuchs see if maybe move him on oh ricardo's coming back thank god for that i'm looking forward to having ricardo back I think defensively there, we've probably got one too many. I can't unregister Wes Morgan. He is the captain. I'm going to probably play him a couple of games in Europe just to give him a final, you know, farewell, hurrah, whatever you, way you want to put it. Um, so, yeah, difficult position here. I could send out Dewsbury Hall again back out on loan, perhaps. Um... I think for the minute that might have to be that. In hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have stuck with the Jamie Vardy rule because Caden Jackson's kind of taken up a space, right? But at least we have got an, you know, an option if Armstrong and Vardy got injured. And I do need to try and play him more. Ultimately, he was the signing. Armstrong is kind of a cheat signing because he's not playing at Long League. So I really need to kind of um, work on that a little bit. He's played in the League One. But well, that's not really long non-league, right? So anyway, we'll confirm that change there and we'll keep on moving here. And hopefully we'll get our signing over the line. So Leeds United have got him. We've got them in two games' time, so that'll be interesting. Um, oh, work permit. Right, application rejected. That might change everything because I still need to buy another player. So I'm going to peel this. And I think now the option is let's go to the shortlist and see if we can find someone who could be a midfielder for us who will get a work permit, just to be safe. Right, so, Renato Sanchez, we looked at. We've got 40 million now. I do also, as well, have to look at contracts for the rest of the players in a bit as well to make sure that we can, um, you know, get people like Johnny Evans on new deals, etc., etc. And a few younger players as well that I want to try and tie down. I've been recommended Tony Vihalna. Um, only 64, good natural fitness. Distinctly average, though. Um... I'm not sure really he's going to be what we're looking for. Um, I really should go British. Well, Calvin Phillips from Leeds could be an interesting one. I think we get him for 28 million as well. Um, I won't get Gagliardini now because he started at Inter and he's moved on. Matt Grimes is one I looked at. He's not highly rated, only 55 here, as you can see. But his stats are pretty good. His passing and tackling are very good. His crossing is very good. Hasn't got much in the way of flair, but I do wonder... Anyway, we'll keep pressing for the minute and see what we can do. 
Oh, he's been granted his work permit, so I ain't gonna have to worry, and it's only lunchtime, so that is good news. We're gonna get our man. The other thing as well, of course, I can sign at under 21, so because you don't have to register at under 21. So I think I'm gonna have a look at that a minute and just see if I can do anything there, and then we'll finish off this deadline day and get to the Crystal Palace game. Right, we're just going to finish our business now. We've just got a couple more questions coming in. I have, as you can see, made another offer as well. Will Luke Thomas be loaned out or remain at the club? Um, it will be better served staying with us because we've got European football and a lot more games, of course, to navigate. So now we're going to keep moving here. Luton have made a loan offer for a guy we were looking at signing, Adam Ida, a young striker from Norwich, a very good young player there. I was looking at the option. The question now is, I might get my last sign over the line before the end of the window he's accepted the contract offer i think i found someone who obviously we don't have to register because we've got full registration having signed here he is having signed um samasco um so andrea skov olsen for bologna he's going to cost us 3.5 million danish 20 years old he'll come in be alongside casper one of his buddies in the denmark squad uh, how serious has our transfer budget been deleted? Not that much. Deleted. Delete. No. Depleted. Um, there's, there's still enough to get a couple more players in. Not that we're going to do it, but we might as well, you know, show off a little bit. And so we got him. So there we go. I think now, with that being said, our business reveals transfer lunch funds are low. I just literally said we had money and they've gone... Shows you the press right they say what they want. So as you can see now, that really brings us a couple more options because this guy we don't have to register and gives us another winger option. If you look at his stats here, I think he's a younger Mark Albrighton. He's very rounded, he's not particularly pacey, but he's got everything in the right place and a great potential ability. I think very well he can grow a bit more as well. He's going to be a great signing. And once again, of course, we have brought in um, Samasku as well. Who I think is going to be fantastic. It's already gone up in wages quite in wages and price quite a bit as well. So I think with that, our business is going to be done. Let's quickly do some squad numbers here to see what we got. We're running out of squad numbers. Eagerly number 22. I quite like that. And Scott Olsen, number 30. So I think with that, that's going to be our transfer business done. So I think now we're happy. Quickly go to the team report and look at squad depth. There's no one else we're going to move on or anything like that. So... Leave that here. Scott Olsen's a right-hand sided player, but of course we have got a bit of option here. I'm going to remove Madison from this role, actually. And in fact, let's balance it out a bit. It looks a little bit lopsided, right? So let's put Scott Olsen back in there. Um, I should just call him Olsen. Scott Olsen sounds like he's some sort of disease. But anyway, there we go. Madison can now come back as well into this position. So Mask can come out from there. We're going to re-add Madison because he's going to play now. as the attacking playmaker here, right? Um, and take some ask out from there and yeah I think now if you look at this we're looking a lot more balanced now and of course the registration things have all been met so I'm happy with that unless there's any last minute drama from maybe Real Madrid or Barcelona trying to unsettle in DB, I think we should be really good with that we better get to that Palace game and that international break happen hopefully no injuries we do not need any more injuries we're just getting players back now the last thing we need is that to happen Right, quickly before the Palace game, we've got the European Cup registration. This is something I do fear because there's a few more obligations that have to be met, unlike the Premier League. As you can see here, four players must have been trained at Leicester. I think we're okay for that. Eight or more must have been trained in England. I think we're okay with that. Um, hopefully we can register everyone because I've been there before you have to leave someone out and they get very upset with you and that can disrupt team morale so Casper's going to be obviously our main goalkeeper uh, I need to see who the Leicester players who we've trained are going to be um, Luke Thomas obviously will have to qualify he's under 21 isn't he so technically you wouldn't have to register him which is a bit of a funny one okay so Hamza Chowdhury, Dewsbury Hall uh, and Harvey Barnes. Yes, we're going to have to register him because we've got to have a minimum of four Leicester players trained, right? So that's okay. Let's make sure we get Vardy in there. I wouldn't mind leaving out Jackson, even though I probably should play him. Actually, no, let's put him in. Let's put him in. Oh, it's froze. Come on, what are you doing? There we go. Right. Maximum. So we hit all the criteria, as you can see already. Now I'm just going to keep clicking and I hope we don't run out of spaces. To be fair, all Brighton's out for like two months. So, worst case scenario, I could leave Mark out. I think we've, oh God, we've got six more places and they seem to be a lot more than six there, don't they? Right, we might have to get a bit selective here. So I think we're going to have to go with Benkovic, Sanuku, Evans, Fafana, Morgan, Ricardo. Oh, this is not good. Right, 
Dropping Thomas gives me a problem because I need him for my four players trained at Leicester. This is a problem. I can see someone getting upset in a minute here. Um, right, I'm going to leave Albrighton out um, because he's injured. I think that makes perfect sense for us right now. Do I leave Caden Jackson out? Oh dear, this is tighter than what I wanted. Right, Caden Jackson is going to have to come out. I'm sorry, I know it's not ideal, but he's going to have to. And I'm going to have to go with Justin and Christine. And Fuchs is going to have to miss out. This could cause a problem in its own right, because he's quite an influential player as well. These are the problems you face, unless I can think of someone else I can take out. But I really don't think I can, so we're going to go with that. And we're going to see the upset that's about to occur. But... What else can I do? I kind of knew this was coming. Um, there was nothing else I could have done about it. Um, Jamie Vardy is injured. There's no one kicking off as of yet by the looks of it. Christian Fuchs, he's reacted well. He's, he's morale's poor if he's been left out. But, and same as Jackson. But I think we might have got away with that. Famous last words. Might have just got away with that. But as you can see, that is the challenge with this. But then I will use Fuchs in some games, obviously. Being frank, it's probably going to be his last year. I'm pretty sure it's in the last year of his deal. And that would be it. Because we haven't really got a place for him. So, yeah, I think we got away with that. So, anyway. On that being said, I'm going to at least the short list. And we're going to get into that Palace game we talked about. Which is a massive one for us. See if we can win that. And not slip up. Right, we're just going to do the Crystal Palace game in this episode because time is pressing with all the transfers and the transfer deadline day and all that. So let me quickly take you through the team. In good news, no one's come back injured from international duty. In bad news, Jamie Vardy is out for a couple of days, so he will not be ready for Crystal Palace away. But they are bottom of the league, so maybe that will still be fine. But anyway, the team we're going to go is going to be Schmeichel, Justin, Evans, Suyuncu, Castine, Castagna. I keep saying Castine. It is Castagna. I do apologise. And Didi, Madison and Tillemans. As you can see, there's a lot of connectivity between these players. They know each other's relationships very well. And then we've got Undare on the right, Barnes on the left and Armstrong up top, who I'm really quite excited about. The bench is looking a lot stronger now we made our signings as well. There is a place for new signings, Sasamasku. I can't pronounce it, on the bench. So that is wonderful. The player registration window, we're confirming. We have done all that. Right, let's get to this match now. This is going to be a big one for us. I've got the box waiting. Um, I'm going to send my assistant to the press conference today because I am not interested. Right, anyway, let's get ourselves ready for action. Now the hair is still tied up, ready for action. Okay, the next episode, we're going to then, uh, look at the highlights, the goal rush for the Wolfsburg game, and look at the next two league games, which I believe are Leeds us and Southampton. So, transfer deadline's completely closed now. We could have done a bit of local business, perhaps, with um, teams in the lower leagues and whatnot. But I'm happy with what we've done. And I still, after this in a minute, need to criticise Christian Fuchs for his poor training. And then I need to look at offering some new contracts and keeping some players under contract who are about to be out of it come, you know, the end of the next season. Um, when it comes to January, they'll be able to get off from elsewhere so it's very important that we can get that all sorted but anyway we'll get to the Palace game now right so here we go Liverpool just beat Tottenham 3-0 to go top of the Premier League so that's pretty realistic and Nacho is starting against us after we sold him let's hope he doesn't come back to haunt us that happens in football quite a bit so we'll go to the match here like I said the only real change from last time is Armstrong in for Vardy who is completely rested does mean Caden Jackson's got a chance off the bench potentially today looking at the Palace side they've got for Hennessy, Klein, Kiate, Sacco, Schlup, ex Leicester again Townsend, Milovic, Milovic sorry, Ryder the world. I can never pronounce his name either. It does my nutting. Zaha, Batshuayi and Inanacho. And it's funny because some of those words are harder than others, but some of them I just cannot say. Point the finger. Um, I want you to pick up last time from last time where you, you know, finished off. They might not be able to remember it because it was like two weeks ago. I have faith in them as well. I always do. Wilfred Ndidi is set to make 125th league appearance. He's truly fantastic. Is Johnny Evans fit enough? I think so. But if not, we have got options on the bench, which is what you need. So, fantastic here. I don't know what formation powers to line up at. It's like a 4-4-2. Yeah, a 4-4-2 for them as the action gets underway and they're going to start it off it. In a Nacho waiting short there from the free kick. Andros Townsend now coming forward. He's got a shot on him from distance. Milahovic, Sacco there pushing forward. Townsend with the strike and this is not a good start. It's taken under a minute for Andros Townsend to fire one in the bottom right hand corner. It is Crystal Palace 1, Leicester 0 at Selhurst Park and my, <laughs> my tension has just slightly increased because this team is bottom of the league. I oh, wish you get that box ready. 
Anyway, it's gone in. There's nothing we can do about it now apart from push forward and hope we can get a goal back. Was he onside? That's going to be the question. Is a tight offside? He is onside. Played on there by, I believe it was James Justin. So there we go. Right. Terrible start, but at least there's a long way to go. Let's hope we get a few more highlights now. Otherwise, we'll be looking at starting the next episode with a humiliation for me of some description. Which will not be great. And as he take the goal kick now for Palace. Loofs, hoofs it. Loofs it forward. Down to Castagna. Down to Barnes. They're linking up on the left today with Justin on the right. Here he comes here. Plays it into Barnes again. Barnes and there's a good finish from Adam Armstrong. Was he onside? I believe he was. We'll take that. Very Jamie Vardy-esque, isn't he? Just what we've been looking for there. It was a nice bit of build-up play. The short passing we've changed in the last few games has made a difference here. Here comes Timmy down inside. Barnes there goes for the strike but Armstrong just guides it past the goalkeeper it wasn't going in otherwise so that is a fantastic finish his fourth goal of the season and Jamie Vardy's party might be coming to a bit of a halt here with our new young signing from Blackburn he has been utterly fantastic right we can calm down a bit now hopefully we can keep building as we hit the half hour mark the stats are starting to come back in our favor as we get a corner now and dare to take it Barnes is at the near post it's come off the crossbar and it's Adam Armstrong again Vardy's got a hat trick in the last game can Armstrong now go anything you could do Jamie I can do better mate that's what he's on the pitch for Barnes has had it off the bar you don't get an easier goal than that do you the defense were off the line Armstrong was there like oh just kick it in. And that's what he did. Fantastic stuff. The Crystal Palace won. Leicester City 2. After going 1-0 down, we have turned this up. And Nina Nacho has got an unhappy face on this thing. Sorry, mate. You're not quite up to this level. Your team's 20th. Anyway, here comes Klein now. Now I've said that, I'm going to regret it, right? Five minutes towards our time. Harvey Barnes, could pick the ball up well. Can Tillemans do something? Indeed, he goes along to Armstrong. He has got pace. Plays it off to Tillemans again. Tillemans has got the passing. Armstrong's got the pace. Good combination of having your team. Klein plays it forward now. Soon she with a clearing header. In the book again. We knock a hard tackling on either. Tillemans from distance. What a goal that is. That is possibly the goal of the season here. That is twice in two games. He has struck one from 30 yards. And he's utterly mugged off Crystal Palace there. It is Crystal Palace 1. Leicester City 3. And Yuri Tillemans has just run forward here. And this is probably the most beautiful goal I've seen on the game so far. Top right hand corner. Off the crossbar and in. Shades of Andrew. Townsend himself and he's looked at Andros and gone you want to try and do that to us mate here we are we got four minutes to half time I've got a bit stumbled on my words there Madison tries to flick it forward Armstrong heads it back to Madison again we're playing with confidence now as Madison comes in oh he gets it on target but straight out of Hennessy unfortunately he needs to get either side in there to cause a bit of a problem Madison's probably been the least performing player so far but when the rest of the team are doing so well and you're 3-1 up at half time there's not else you can look at really we head to the dressing room Right, I'm going to be quite happy here. Um, I'm happy the way things are going. Keep it going, lads. We shouldn't be complacent. Uh, luckily, it's only our new signing on the bench. Um, I'm going to leave the changes for the moment, but I am aware that we've got Christine or Castagna, Castagna and Suyunchu both on a yellow card. So we have to look at that in a minute. James Justin on the right-hand side. Barnes, oh, it should have been four. How in the hell have you missed from there? He was two yards out. He could have fallen for a hat-trick for, for Armstrong even. Corner for Leicester. Undare in. Slip with a clearing header. In the natural try and launch a counter-attack, but there's no one up there. Look at that. We've got him penned so well back here. Justin takes his time to find the pass for Ndidi. Tillemans again. They're not going to let him have that much space again after the first goal, are they? You read a wild now to Batshuayi. In a nacho. He would love to get one against his old club here. Zaha. Slip. Palace starting to build again now. They're having moments of brilliance now. Slip overlapping. Trying to come inside and he does and it's Townsend and he's got his second goal right it's game on again I was mugging him off a little bit and perhaps I'm going to bite the bullet for that one um Slup done really well there on the left hand side there for Crystal Palace he found a bit of space pulled off his defender and it's gone in so there we go it's Crystal Palace 2 Leicester City 3 and I think I might need to shout and get a bit more encouragement here. I'm going to demand some more of the entire team, you know. Because if we can see one now, this could go completely downhill. Imagine that. We were up, we were down, and we ended up losing this one after playing so well towards the end of that first half. But here comes Tillemans again. He's the sort of man that can make a difference. Milohovic went in strong there. He's someone who likes a red card. Senga's on there trying to find a way through. Barnes has. Oh, he's put it near post. Why couldn't he lay it across? Hennessy's done a really good save there. He's read the game really well. And I think now it's time to make a quick change now because we're getting some bookings in there that I want to look at um do I want to get Fuchs on 
he's having a good game, Castine, so I'm going to say, or Castania, sorry. I'm going to keep getting that wrong. It's going to do my Swede. I should have a swear jar every time I get it wrong. I should pop it right here, and that way I'll get it right. Well, let's get Benkovic on anyway. Who's not having a good game? Um, I think Undare we can replace for Ryan Kent. Yeah, do you know what? Let's give him a go as an inverted player here. I didn't do the team talk. That was probably a mistake, but we'll go for it now anyway. We've had so much more of this game. We've had three shots, three on target, and two of them are in the back of the net. We've had 14 and 8. We still want to try and get another goal here, because otherwise we could be throwing away a couple of easy points here. Tillemans now in the midfield for Leicester, trying to build something. Madison can pick it up and play it down to Castagna again. Yes! Barnes now on that left-hand side. Plays it back to Castagna again. Just takes saying it over and over again. The more he gets in the game, the more I get it right. Madison down to Indeedy. Armstrong trying to play our way through the midfield here. Justin on the overlap on the right hand side. Comes inside. Great ball across. Harvey Barnes. That is sexy football ladies and gentlemen. That is Barcelona football and that's what we're looking for. The shorter passing. Leicester have the fourth goal. My tension is eased. That is entirely what we needed. James Justin with a good assist there. Playing fantastically well since he's come back off injury. Harvey Barnes starting to find his feet after a couple of shaky games at the start and I think we're starting to look like a potential force in the Premier League. It's going better than the last time I did Leicester, which was an utter disaster. I've still got one more change, and why not make the change? Right, come on, Caden Jackson. It's your time to shine, buddy. I signed you as the non-league Jamie Vardy replacement. You've got five minutes to get yourself a goal. Let's do this. It's not looking like it's going to happen. Five minutes of added on time here. Palace 2, Leicester 4 at Selhurst Park. I wish we could keep a few more clean sheets. It's something we need to look at. The full-time whistle goes though, and that's all she wrote, and that's all we'll need, and that will do lovely. A 4-2, no punishment for me. Well done, lads. Off we go. Exactly what we needed. Right, how about that for a comeback? We went down, down but we made some great, you know, great changes to get back into it. Substitute Armstrong's on a hat trick. Um, I felt confident the game was won. I think at that point with the fourth goal it was. Keeps us in fifth place in the Premier League, which is what we need. So it keeps us up towards, you know, like I say, the European places. Maybe an outside chance of doing something really special. I'm shaking my head because it's not going to be likely, is it? So James Justin's about to trigger a clause, which means we'll pay losing 800,000. So that's one of the things. We're going to send uh, our assistant to the match, uh, to the post-match press conference, sorry. And let's get down to the schedule and have a quick look and see where we stand. Right, so we start to look a bit more better now. We've only had really the Carabao Cup defeat and then draws and wins, so that's good. We've scored 10 goals in two games, which is fantastic. So next time out, we're going to come back. We're going to have the goal rush of Wolfsburg. We're going to have a goal rush in between for Nice and we're going to do the Leeds and Southampton games before we get to the meaty stuff of Arsenal and Man City and Everton teams around our level. But anyway guys, thank you ever so much for watching this episode. Please like, subscribe and comment. I keep forgetting to say that as well. And like I say, this has been the Leicester City Fearless Foxes Say Football Manager 2021 right here on FM 303. I have been your host, the one and only Tom Smith. Please join us next time for some more Foxes action. Cheers now. Have a great day.